Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to do some freezer meals, kind of, I don't know. Um, we're gonna fly by the seat of our pants right now. I've been binge watching this girl on YouTube. Her name's Acre Homestead. And if you aren't following her, you should go and follow her. She has amazing like freezer meal ideas. I've never made freezer meals in the aspects that you put the chicken in the bag, with the marinade and let it marinate in the freezer and then just like pull it out in the morning and cook it that night. I've never done that before. Chicken was on sale at Superstore. So I got three packages of the club pack of chicken legs and they only had one club pack of the chicken breasts. So I got that. So we're going to try prepping it and then I will do another video when I actually make them and see how they turn out. Um, because I've never done it, I'm just going to take her recipe. She has a, like a blog kind of, uh, it's called Scratch Pantry. I'll link it in the description below. So I'm going to do her teriyaki chicken one and the honey mustard chicken because both sound delicious. Um, so we're going to try those today and see if the kids like them. I'm always looking for recipes that the kids are gonna like and things like that. And this, with it being a freezer meal, would make it really easy since the summer's just gonna get more and more hectic because we've got soccer, we've got swimming, we're doing renovations, we've got a chicken coop to build, well, I guess a guinea hen coop to build. So it's going to get very busy this summer. Uh, so we've got the windows coming in shortly. Anyway, so freezer meals are going to be a lifesaver this summer. So that's what I plan on doing with the chicken breasts is just cutting them. I'm gonna slice them in half so they're not as thick. And then I'm gonna put six of them in a plastic bag and then do her, follow her recipe and we'll see how it turns out. Now for the legs, I'm actually just gonna cook them all up um, in the oven. We're gonna have some of them tonight for dinner. And then all the extras, I'm gonna take all the meat off of because I saw how, I think her name's Becky. Um, I saw how she made chicken broth and I'm running low on broth. So I'm just gonna do that. So let's just get started because it's almost dinner time. All right, so I'm going to do the chicken legs first so I can get them in the oven to start cooking and then I'll cut the uh, chicken breasts in half and well, cause we don't, they don't have to be cooked. I'm just gonna cut them in half, throw them in a bag, throw all the sauces and stuff that I need into them and then I'll lay them flat in the freezer. Cause one of the things that Becky had said was that you want to, when you're putting it in a bag to freeze, you want to try and get all the chicken pieces to be flat so that way it falls faster, which is like, so smart. Why didn't I think of that sooner? Because I freeze ground beef all the time in a chunk. She's so smart. And I am seasoning these the way that I normally season them. And I will tell you the spices as I put them on. And I really do not enjoy the feel of raw chicken. I'll just have to take one of these out and switch it up because I've got oh, I've got one more pack of chicken thighs in the fridge that I gotta cook up. But anyway, so the the spices that I normally put on pretty much like any meat if I'm not following a recipe and I just wanna like quickly go and like make some ground beef or some chicken or whatever, this is my go-to spices. Um, so the first is garlic powder. It says garlic salt, but it's actually garlic powder that I put in the container I reused it. And we really like garlic, so I usually tend to put a lot on. All right, second one, onion powder. Onion powder. 
Secret ingredient, Lowry's seasoning salt. So I never add salt because I usually add this to almost like everything. And it tastes so good and it's such a bummer that the second ingredient in it is sugar. Um, but it just tastes so good. And it probably tastes good because there's sugar in it. Then, pepper. All right, next, and one of my new favorites, chipotle chili powder. So good. But I use it lightly. Last, ground cayenne pepper, and I use it even more lightly. We like spice. Um, and the reason that I don't put sauces or anything on is because we usually throw barbecue, or not barbecue sauce, but um, we usually throw hot sauce on our chicken after it's cooked because everybody in this family likes different hot sauce. Joshua likes Frank's Red Hot. I like Nando's Hot one, and I like, um, I do like Frank's. And then Josh likes this other hot sauce. Um, what's it called? That's gonna be hot. Momento de Murte. Murte, I don't know. But on the heat index, it's an eight out of 10. And for me, if it's not mixed with soy sauce, I find it too spicy, but when he mixes it with soy sauce and puts it like on his rice and stuff like that, I find that the soy sauce takes like the instant burn out of my mouth. <laughs> and then I can semi enjoy it. Um, that's gonna be a hot chicken breast, let's just say that now. But I do find that if you make something too hot, put something sweet on it, so like honey, and it'll kill down the heat. So if you need to um, like mustard or honey on it because you put too much on, it'll take the heat out. But I'm actually just cooking these, taking the meat off the bones and I'm going to be putting them in bags because we're going to use the meat later for what I call Buddha bowls. I don't know what they're called, so if you know what they're called, put it down in the description below because um, all it is is like you can put rice in it, you can put quinoa in it, it's chopped lettuce, you can put any, whatever vegetables in it you want. It's just like a bowl of, I don't know, I call it a Buddha bowl. But anyway, so I have the oven at 325 and we're going to throw these in and let these cook. I'm going to move the oven racks because... I'm going to move them so they're just above and below the middle so they cook. They both cook. And then I'm also going to show you... Come with me. So as you can see, it's not a lot of chipotle chili powder or cayenne pepper. Or powder so it's not gonna be too hot I just kind of sprinkle it on you get a little flavor and then this is how I put them in the oven like that so they can both go We have a convection bake oven, so I, I don't know, that's always the button I hit. And I'll put them on for 20 minutes. And because I'm so weary about chicken, I always test it with my meat thermometer because like, yeah, I don't want food poisoning from chicken. One of the other seasonings that is my go-to but I haven't stocked back up on it is smoked paprika. Tastes delicious, so you should try that too. But let's get the chicken breasts and cut them in half. So her recipes call for two pounds of the chicken, and then the other one calls for like four chicken breasts. One, two, three, four, five. I only have seven, so one's gonna have three, 
The other one's gonna have four. And it's just gonna have to be that way. All right. so bad. It says you need a quarter cup of stone ground mustard and I had no idea what that meant. So I just got Dijon mustard and I'm hoping that works. Garlic cloves. She says three cloves minced. I don't know if that's enough though. Usually in every recipe I will double it. So we're gonna do that here. And if anybody has a trick for peeling garlic, please let me know. It's funny too because Becky, this girl, Acre Homestead, is so like organized and prepared. And she makes it look so flawless, obviously, because she's done it for a while. And here I am taking like 10 minutes just to peel garlic. Six cloves of garlic. But it's nice though, because she helps you kind of figure out how you can get organized and be super efficient in the kitchen. I wasn't like trying to bash her or anything. Um, she's very efficient in the kitchen, which is amazing. And I'm sure I can be if I actually prepared any of this, uh, but I, I didn't. That's usually, unfortunately, what most of my cooking is, is like on a whim. All right, six cloves of garlic. I'm gonna keep the top of the garlic for when I make the broth later. I don't know, it might add some flavor. All right, I have all my ingredients. The things you find in your baking drawer when you have children. Just put it back so I don't get in trouble. All right. Get that nice and open. Okay, quarter cup. using old-fashioned Dijon. Is this mustard? Yeah. Okay, this is my garlic smusher. It's cool because this goes in the other side to pull it out. Anyway. Again, I'm keeping the skin aside for when it's time to make broth. Pepper. It says half a teaspoon. I'm just putting in a bunch. Half a teaspoon of salt. about half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon of oregano, my oregano is old, barely smells, so I'm going to put in a little bit more than it calls for just to try to get some of that smell back in there. And then it says a pinch of red peppers, if you're brave. Uh, so I'm just gonna do about that much, just to get some heat in there. And that's it. Oh, chicken thighs are almost done. Three seconds. Two. 
too much air. Just gonna try and make sure all the chicken's coated, um, especially since they're like too thick, like too side by side. I wanna get in the middle. Make sure they've all got a nice little coating on them. So I'm trying to keep it flat, but also like try and get the air bubbles out. And keep the sauce in. So, just get as many air bubbles out as possible. And then I'm gonna freeze it flat. Make sure I have room in my freezer to freeze it flat. And I have no Sharpie to write what this is or when I made it, so it'll be fine. One thing I did know was freezing sauces flat, because this was a sauce I made the other day. Um, it was like diced tomatoes, cream cheese, cheeses, uh, I put way too much cayenne pepper in, so I ended up having to put honey in it, which it tastes amazing. But anyway, side note, um, but I froze it flat, and this way, if you have a lot, you can stack them this way, or like stack them in the fridge one on top of each other, and they don't take up a lot of room. So, fun fact. I just never thought of doing that with like chicken and beef. All right. I gotta remember where my thermometer is. Got this at Canadian Tire. It's Master Chef. I mainly use it for my bread. The only thing I wish it had was like the temperatures of meat on the back where it's safe to eat because I don't even, I want to say it's like 160 something. Cooked chicken temperature. Poultry, 165, see? I think I said that, anyway. I say give it another 10 minutes and we'll try again. Okay, this one calls for two pounds too. Yeah, whatever. Do have soy sauce. Half a cup of brown sugar. Garlic. Yeah, I think these are done, so I'll let them rest in there a minute. Here you go, buddy. Here, some water. Quickly get this finished. All right. What do we need? A teaspoon of crushed ginger. Well, I only have fresh ginger. I'm probably just going to grate it. be good. I'm only going to put that much in because her Korean red pepper flakes are like, um, they're like spicy and sweet, so... 
All right. Now we mix it up, lay it fat, lay it flat, freeze it, and then we'll get the chicken out. I'd say that's well coated. Chicken freezer meals are done. Now we have to pull these out and see how they're doing. Got my Temptations oven gloves, which are excellent for catching mice, by the way. Because Josh did that twice. With his bare, well, with his hands. Not bare hands, but anyway. Hot. All right, so. Where do you poke to tell if it's cooked? Oh, I poke in the, in the um, hey, most immediate, oh. thickest spot. So I've been poking here, made sure I didn't hit the bone, then I've been poking here. And they're hitting the one. Let me see. Because there's a bone over there that you don't want to hit. Yeah, these are good. All right, so what to do? You don't want to take the meat off while it's hot. So I know what I'll do. All right, that's all the garlic. All right, so I'm just gonna take the chicken that I'm not using and throw it into one of the new Pyrex dishes, although this is Anchor, um, that I got from the grocery store because I'm gonna slowly start building my stock of Pyrex dishes or Anchor dishes or basically glass cookware. Thank you. Um, so that way, I can freeze my freezer meals in that and not always the aluminum dishes because those aren't really reusable where these are. So, so I will take these and just let them rest in there. Just take them all to rest in there because then I can steal all the juices that are in this pan as well. So this is one of the cool things I saw watching Acre Homestead is um, when she makes her own chicken broth anytime she's peeling carrots or cutting onions or whatever she takes the peels and stuff and just puts them in a freezer bag and puts them in the freezer and so when she's making broth she takes all of that and just throws it in so all of the flavors come out which is so smart um, which I haven't done so I might cut up an onion to put into the mashed potatoes so that I can steal some of the onion. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway. Just wanted to grab some of the fat because that's going to make the broth taste good. Give it a lot of flavor. And I actually have a, I have a fat separator, which is what you're going to want when you're making broth. All right, and I'm just going to get rid of this one. Because 
because I only have one more. We are going to take the flavor of the potatoes in our broth too. Why not? We'll see how it goes. This could be like a disaster. I should feel bad wasting them. Although I have to get our composting back up again because now that we have straw, because of what's in the attic, we can compost properly now. I just gotta chop an onion. not the layer I wanted to peel off. I'm going to the onions in there. I'm going to make some chicken broth and we're going to get the flavoring of the onions in the broth. Why are you putting that in? Okay, you know what? You're going to. What? This layer of onion is driving me nuts. So I'm just gonna throw it in here too. Boom! All right. All right. Yes, I'm eating gushers again. We have our chicken. I have bags. And I'm gonna take the chicken off the bones, put them in the bags, put the bones in the crock pot, which I should probably grab. Never really done this before. I don't really have like a technique. I was thinking of throwing it all into a bowl, but uh, then I was like, why dirty the bowl? Oh. We'll see how this goes. I don't have an Audible subscription, so I can't listen to audiobooks. So I listen to YouTube. Alright, so I have four bags that are about halfway full of the chicken. Uh, so I'm going to freeze those. <clears throat> I'll get all the air out and then freeze it. Um, and then I'm going to put the slow cooker into like the container part. And then I'm just going to fill it right up with water and turn it on low and come back in about 12-ish hours and see how it's doing. And then we will finish the broth part tomorrow. So when I take these out to cook them, um, I'm always so weary of chicken. like. We aren't huge chicken eaters here. Um, I don't tend to buy chicken because I'm just so scared of not cooking it enough. So when I pull it out to make for a meal or whatever we're doing, um, I will put it onto like in a baking dish or something and throw it in the oven and kind of just bake it some more just to be on the safe side. Um, but yeah, and I'm gonna freeze it flat. Yeah, I don't know much about meat, and so like anything that's red, I'm like, oh my gosh, I think it's undercooked. So, yeah, better to be safe than sorry. I will freeze those just like that, and we will have four more meals. All right. Now we just wanna fill it with water.
All right, I will leave that to simmer overnight and we'll see what it's like in the morning. All right, so this has been sitting for just over 12 hours and I wanted to show you my separator. I don't know if it's specifically like a gravy separator or what, um, but what it does is it will take any of the gunkiness out that comes out of like, if you've just tipped, like after, if you're making gravy for Thanksgiving and you've tipped your whole container just into your gravy to get all the turkey juices and stuff, but then little bits of gravy fall in, this will take it out. So same with this, this will take out any little bits of chicken and whatnot that's in here and it'll stop it from going in. I wanna say it's like sieve it out, I don't know. But anyway, um, so then once all the juices are in here, all the fat will rise to the top. And then what this does is you push this button here and this moves. And so all of just the broth will come out until I hit the fat. And then once I hit the fat, I will put it somewhere else. We are doing our paint stripping test today to see how well the paint stripper we bought strips the paint on the doors. So that's what else we have going on today. So I'm just using a ladle. So I'll just let that sit for a minute or so. And then as you can see, there's a few bits on there. Oh, we have a helper. Hey, sir. Hey. Yes. Separated a fair bit and then so now we'll ladle some more in. Yeah, yeah we'll let it sit for a minute just to separate again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty separated, don't you? Okay. Yeah. There. Okay. Now. No. No. We're gonna put the lid on. Okay. All right. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. She hot. So don't touch. Okay. All right.
Okay. Boom. Little training treats. Look at this. Mm. Five. Five. Five of them. Yeah, if I had a bigger slow cooker, I could have got more. I'm sure, but oh well. Sit. Again. I'll also have to look up if you can do it multiple times. Okay. You know what I mean? Five. in the fridge when it cools down. I'm going to let all of these cool down completely. And then I've left enough room that if you freeze them after they're completely cooled down, um, they're not going to explode. So we just want to make sure they're completely cooled down. That's hot. But we have five jars and they're either... I think they're 904, 906 five. milliliters. Yeah. <laughs> He's at the phase where he copies everything he said. So we're all done with our gloves. Yeah. And we'll let these cool down. So that was three cha three trays of um, chicken legs, which had. One, two, three, four, about seven legs per tray. So it's 21 chicken legs plus the one tray of chicken breasts. And out of that, we have four Ziploc freezer bags. So four meals of adding chicken to something. And when I make those, I am going to like cook them again, but not fully cook them. Just make sure they're well heated and a little bit cooked up. Um, cause like I said, chicken freaks me out and when you get close to the bone, it's kind of pink and it doesn't sit well with me. But anyway, um, so we got four of the chicken freezer meals, essentially. We did the two freezer meals with the raw chicken. That was the teriyaki chicken and the honey mustard chicken. And we got five containers of chicken broth out of all of that. So I am super impressed. Um, the broth was super easy, honestly, and it's going to be an easy cleanup because we have a dishwasher. So I'm actually really happy that I stumbled upon the Acre Homestead YouTube channel because many people have explained this to me and it's always kind of grossed me out and freaked me out, but I don't know, watching her do it, I was like, you know what? Like she's, I think she's a year, she's one year older than me. I can totally do this. And so thank you for the inspiration, Acre Homestead. Um, you're literally like living my dream right now. So we're actually trying to fix up the house so we can maybe sell it. We have a really good market right now. So we're going to maybe try and sell the house. So that way we can get a homestead of our own because we can't just own animals just because we live out in the country. Apparently we just figured that out two years after buying this house. So anyway, um, but yeah, super impressed. Um, one thing I do want to know if you guys know in the comments, if you're able to reuse any of those to make like a second batch of chicken broth or not, I'd really like to know because I didn't have a big slow cooker. So I feel like if I had a bigger one, I obviously could have got more broth out of this because there was a lot, like the whole thing was full. Um, so would I be able to like reuse those and like just take all the water out, put more water in and do it a second time? So I'm going to search that up. But if you guys know, let me know in the comments. And if you found this of any value to you, um, just go ahead and like the video, subscribe to see more videos like this. We've got lots of playlists going on in this family. Yeah, hit the, hit the notification bell so that way you can see when we have future videos because we have a lot going on this summer. And now I'm like super into doing freezer meals and stuff. So we're gonna have a lot more coming up in the future and I'm thinking about doing some like, cooking videos because I kind of just cook on the whim and make stuff up so I figured why not just record those and help people sh just show people how creative you can get with cooking but anyway have a good day guys mm -hmm.